Hello, this is Jim Reese with TSI Technical Sales International. I'm here today to show you the Revit MEP 2012 design BIM going to the fabrication BIM of Fab MEP, which includes CADDUCT, CADMEC, and uh, SDUCT, SMEC, and the world's most commonly used manufacturing software, CAMDUCT. We've been working with the AMCA in Australia to put together this presentation based on the standards that they're using in the AMCA, which includes um, working with manufacturers, such as the pump manufacturer. They've signed a memorandum of understanding between the AMCA and the pump manufacturer to come up with the standards that they would like to see in terms of property sets with inside of the models for the BIM map OZ, is what they're calling it, uh, standards. So this is an example of the data sets they're looking to uh, maintain within the pump manufacturers. Um, we were very heavily involved in data content creation for the MAP software, which is the CAD Duck software. And uh, we're basically bringing that data into Revit MEP uh, through our managed content. So here's a valve, for example. And if I go look at those property sets um, and take a look at this um, PDF, this is actually going back to building data. And it's got this MAC valve uh, spec sheet here associated with that component. Um, that's the level of detail we're taking these components to when we're actually pulling them into uh, the Revit MEP environment to our data content creation. So what we really want to see is taking this file from Revit MEP 2012 into the manufacturing environment and then um, adding to that the exact segmentation and whatnot for the components itself and then basically sending that back into Revit 2012, which has been a requirement of the AMCA. So what I'm going to do here we we'll go ahead and select those components. I'm going to the Add-in tab. We're a third-party developer on top of Revit 2012. And what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and isolate the equipment components and pull those in as graphical elements. Obviously, I need to go grab one more of those. As I do that, I'm going to go to store the graphical elements. I'm going to send that out. I'm going to send that from design BIM to fab BIM. And I'm going to put this out right here. As I go to the fabrication software, you notice that's exporting out right there, and that's done. So if I go to the fabrication software, this is fab MEP OZ. The configuration for this has been developed specifically for the Australian market. And I'm going to type uh, process run. I'm going to go ahead and select my file that I sent out. And it's using the component services, the size, and the orientation and direction, and the uh, shape of that to pull it into that MEP. So you'll see right here, it's going to reconstruct those services and the graphical elements, such as the chiller, and pull that into the fabrication model. You'll also notice that it's added quite a bit of data to these duct runs, and it's broken them up for fabrication. Uh, if I go to this bend, for example, and look at that, you can see here's the uh, flat pattern developments for that bend. And it's prepared, ready to go for fabrication. Um, same thing is true if I go down and look at uh, the valve, for example. You'll see now the valve has the flange, the weld gap, the B and G sets, all that are required to manufacture that. And you'll also see the hangers there as well. Um, if I go and take a look at that valve, actually, um, if I select the valve, in here and go to the properties of that and the link tab here within the MAP product. It'll take me right to that spec sheet. So this spec sheet, as I open this and say an AutoCAD workflow, this would uh, give us the ability to send this out to Navisworks, for example, as that is part of the link that's uh, maintained. So what I want to do now is take this model and I want to do a 3D export here and um, I'm going to go ahead and set that up right here again we'll call this a number five send that out exports complete so if I go back into Revit here I'm going to go ahead and just um, get rid of that model go to my blank model here which has uh, you know, nothing in it so now if I go ahead and do the in, 
which is number five right here. And as I go ahead and pull that in, all the items that are in the fabrication file on the left-hand side here, and the families within this project are right here within the viewer. Now, if something was not in the viewer, you can go ahead and load that family into the project. Uh, we'll go ahead and mapping the components that are in this family. Now, we're using manufactured Revit-based manufacturing files, the families, as we're pulling those in. For example, we have extensions um, and bend with extensions. So we've got quite a bit going on here other than just the file itself. So what we've done is we've been managing content for MAP software um, for several years and have built an extensive library. We're adding more data sets to that, which you saw in the PDF sheets there. And as standards are being built, um, we're adding more and more information associated with components that are within the MEP industry. What that allows us to do through managed content is be able to update people as changes are taking place, whether it be uh, an estimating change or whether it be something that's coming from directly from the manufacturer. And we've been doing this inside of the MAP software for many, many years now, as I mentioned. What we're doing now today is we're doing the exact same thing inside of Revit with exact same component data. So we generate the family, and then after we generate the family, we're able to generate the parametric geometry that services into that family. So as we're placing the components back into the Revit 2012 environment in MEP, the family is generated by building data. It's maintained so that um, it keeps its consistency. And so when we map back to that family, we can anticipate the results because we're the author of the family as it was generated and we're the author of the map component in terms of the geometry itself. So you'll see right here, as the model is being built out, you're adding things like hangers. You'll see things like flanges and bolt and gasket sets that are all being generated directly inside the model itself. So if I go ahead and uh, zoom down in here, for example, and take a look at this, you'll see the hangers are in here. Um, the valve that I referenced earlier, if I go ahead and select that valve, you'll see that'll go ahead and take me to the exact same uh, component we saw earlier with the PDF sheet there. Um, and this model was generated directly from the fabrication product. And so for things like hanger extraction through our point builder software, which we've created, uh, we've had in the AutoCAD environment for several years now when we started working with Trumbull MEP. So I'm gonna go ahead and export some points I'm looking for specific families within this model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and scan for those. So pick up, um, you know, the clevis and some straps here. Set a path for this. And we'll just call this uh, Trimble MEP. And export the points. So that's been successfully created. And now if I want to view those points, I can do that in the viewer with inside the Revit environment here. And open that MEP file. And there's the points that I just generated from the Revit file. And this goes directly to Trumbull MEP right here. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. For more information, you can contact www dot tsi-software.com.au. Thank you very much.